<laughs> Transforming empathy into empowerment is exactly what the Invictus Games are all about. And joining us now is CEO Michael Burns. Uh, welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for coming in today. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks. Very exciting day. Now, it officially kicks off tomorrow, runs through until next Saturday. But there is a great ceremony happening in Nathan Phillips Square today at noon. Yeah, we're going to be uh, raising the official Invictus flag uh, at City Hall, which is very exciting um, because uh, this is the final day of a national flag tour that started back in uh, mid-August uh, mid, uh, uh, in Esquimalt, B.C., has traveled uh, the entire country, and now it's coming into the city. Any amazing moments from that flag tour that you could tell us about? Yeah, I think there was, there was a lot of great moments, uh, obviously a lot of great geographical areas that we reached across the country, but I think, you know, of the 150 flag bearers that we chose, who were selected to carry the flag. Um, they were selected based on their connection or their personal story to the military. And, you know, to go through uh, all of them is, uh, is quite extraordinary because these are men and women, many of them spouses or family members who have gone through a lot, uh, taking care uh, and helping uh, those that have come back, back their loved ones through their uh, healing and the recovery. And, and uh, to see the young and old uh, be a part of this across the country has been pretty special. And you were just saying the weather couldn't be better. Yes. There are very few tickets left, but we can attend many of the events. And this is the largest gathering ever of international athletes. So are we looking at, what is it, 550, something around that? Yeah, we have 17 nations uh, coming to Toronto, including Canada. We have 550 competitors. And every one of those competitors is allowed to bring two members of their family or two friends to be part of the Invictus journey. So I can tell you right now that the Sheridan Center Hotel, where we've got them all <laughs> staying, which is really our athletes' village, has really uh, lit up over the last couple of days, and the excitement is building amongst uh, the family and competitors. It's obviously it's a, it's a, a huge honor that that they're here, but why Canada and why Toronto? Well, we certainly saw it as an opportunity, uh, and it was the True Patriot Love Foundation, uh, which I had been involved with, uh, that went out and secured the games over two years ago. Um, obviously, this is an important year for the country. Uh, not only are we selling our 150th uh, you know, uh, year of confederation, mm -hmm. we also, you remember, in April celebrated the 100th anniversary of Vimy. And I think given all of uh, what our military families have done, both past and present, what a great year for us to honor their service and sacrifice and really the contribution that they've made to make this country uh, as successful as it is. And if Prince Harry is watching right now from wherever he's staying, we owe this all yeah. to him. He started this up a few years ago. This is the third. It, it originated in London. There was another one held in Florida, now Toronto. So how was he the catalyst for all of this? Well, the prince, and, and uh, many may know this, or, or, they, or they don't, is that the prince is also a veteran himself. He uh, spent more than a decade in the British Armed Forces, uh, did a couple of tours over in Afghanistan. He knows firsthand uh, the impact that com uh, combat conflicts can have on a soldier, but also uh, what service can mean uh, for a family. And uh, so it was after his retirement in 2013 that he attended something called the Warrior Games in the States, uh, sort of a smaller version of the games that we're hosting here. And it was during that experience that he saw for the first time the impact that adaptive sport can have on the individual soldier, veteran, but also uh, uh, the, their families. And so he wanted to do something but make an international event, invite the Canadians, the, the Brits, uh, as well as the Americans, the Aussies, and many others uh, to bring their ill and injured as well as their families to compete. And given the success of those games, we were in a position shortly thereafter to make a case uh, that Toronto, Canada should host the games in 2017. It's amazing. Well, yeah, it's uh, amazing. Michael, we're so excited. So again, it's Nathan Phillips Square today at noon. Correct. All right. And then the, for the rest of the weekend, for tickets that are still on sale, $25? $25 for the public. Uh, there is a discount for those that are veterans or service members. Um, we don't have a lot left. Uh, we're very excited about it. Good. Uh, That's great. It's, yeah. a, it's a great problem to have. Uh, but if you are interested in getting tickets, please visit InvictusGames2017.com slash tickets. Have an amazing time. Thank Will you Prince very Harry much. Will be there today at noon? Wait and, you'll have to wait and see. Ah, <laughs> That's a yes. That's a yes. <laughs> Thank you. The 2017 Invictus Games start tomorrow until September 30th. More info, like you said, uh, uh, InvictusGames2017.com. Mel, let's throw it up to you.